In this video, we're going to be talking about a camping checklist, giving you some tips and tricks, and just giving you a little bit of guidance on what that looks like for us, and that way you can get an idea from how we plan for our camping trips. So make sure you stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thank you for joining us. My name's Daniel. I'm Jennifer. And we are Cherish, Cherish the, the Journey. Journey. Today, we are gonna be talking about that RV and camping checklist. So Jen, what do we got going on? So we have a few things on our list for you today that we would like to talk with you about, um, about kind of our camping checklist that we go through when we get ready to go on a camping trip. So first thing is we think about the food that we wanna bring. We think about lunches, breakfast, dinner, even snacks, drinks, water, beer, anything that you're gonna bring, soda, whatever. We think about all of that ahead of time. Even like a week prior, we think about that. And then we make a grocery list based off of what we wanna bring with us. And then I will go to the grocery store a couple of days prior. I usually don't go too much sooner than that because you don't want certain foods to go bad. Sometimes vegetables and fruit and things like that only last for so long. So we usually just go a couple days before we're going to leave. Um, and then I actually, any snacks that we have that don't need to be refrigerated, I will pack those the night before. So that way we don't forget anything because I cannot tell you how many times we've gotten to a campsite and I've forgotten simple things like mayonnaise or I've forgotten a condiment or a spice or anything like that. So I make a very detailed checklist of all of the groceries and food and drinks and things that I need to pack that day. So that way I don't forget anything. So the next thing that we wanna talk about is a cooler. Um, some of you use coolers, some of you may not. We did for a while and then we ended up getting a storage unit for our camper that we had that had power hookups. So the night before we would leave for a trip, we would go over there, we'd hook it up to the power, turn on the fridge. And sometimes I would actually, like if we had time to go turn it on a couple of hours before it got too late, we would sometimes go back because we are really close to the storage that we used to have our camper at we'd go back and actually put a few things in there the night before, like sodas, waters, um, beverages, anything like that. So, um, but we would actually hook up um, the next day and bring it in front of our house so we could pack everything up. And then I would just put all the stuff from our fridge in our kitchen to the fridge in the camper. So for the past, I don't know, what do you want to say, Daniel? Six months, maybe? Yep, past, probably about past, past six months, we would just actually pull our camper mm -hmm. from the storage and park it right out front so that way we could just transfer everything from freezer to fridge to freezer mm -hmm. and that way it, we don't have to put things in the cooler and transport it and then just put it back yeah. to put it in a fridge <laughs> like yeah we have a smaller cooler that we were using for our beverages like our water and if we brought soda or anything like that because sometimes we didn't have that space in the fridge in our camper if we were going for more than just a night or two and so we would bring a cooler to keep our drinks in um, and so if you guys are using a cooler we just wanted to give you a few tips on how to keep your food from getting waterlogged and mm -hmm. also you know just kind of how to make the best of your cooler because sometimes you bring a lot of food and if you don't put it in there the right way you won't always have room so one thing that we used to do when we were newer to camping is we would just like open crushed bags of ice and just dump them in our cooler all over our food. And then we would get to camp and realize that half of our food was waterlogged. So we started putting stuff in double Ziploc bags, which is very helpful, instead yes. of leaving it in those produce bags and all of that kind of stuff mm -hmm. because it gets waterlogged very easily. So we were making sure that we were careful about what we put in and where we put it and then also for our eggs sometimes we'd get those cartons of eggs where the carton just disintegrates if it gets wet so i found these egg egg holders yeah. at walmart for a dollar they're yellow and they hold a dozen eggs and they're plastic so it doesn't allow water in and it keeps your eggs from getting that residue from the carton all over them 
So that's a, that's a good tip. But our most important tip, I feel like, for this is getting a block of ice versus a bag of ice and putting that at the bottom and then some of our some of our meat that we weren't going to use until maybe the next day or the day after we kept it frozen so then we put that at the bottom yep and then we put everything else on top and that kept our food really cold without having to put all this cubed ice or crushed ice or whatever you may use in there and waterlogging all of your food if you're tent camping and you have to use coolers have a separate cooler for your food and a separate cooler for your ice for drinks and your drinks as well yeah. because you're not going to fit if you're going for three or four nights you're not going to fit everything all in one cooler you may need two and so daniel and i recommend a couple of different coolers because you want to be very careful you don't want to go too cheap on a cooler because it won't keep your food warm and it's just not well insulated right. um, but if you don't want to spend a lot of money, you know, we understand that too. Yeah. So go ahead, Daniel. There's, those cheap ones at Walmart that are mm -mm. right in the front, like you ever, they're always out there during the summertime, right in the center aisles. Mm -hmm. They're 10 bucks, 15 bucks. Yes, they work. I'm not saying they don't, but you're going to be buying a lot more ice and it's, yes. it doesn't, it's not very well insulated. Um, we're speaking from experience. So we just want to let you know that we're speaking from experience yes. where we've bought in cheap coolers and they didn't work as well as we thought. So yeah. the little igloo coolers mm -hmm. is what particularly brand um, that we've done in the past. Those don't really hold ice very long. Um, so we were actually given a it's a canyon a, cooler, a canyon I think, right? Cooler. Mm -hmm. It's similar to a Yeti cooler, um, but those actually are double wall insulated and vacuum sealed sealed mm -hmm. so that way there's that a barrier into in there that it actually creates that seal so everything mm -hmm. stays cold for a long time and mm -hmm. just like jennifer said put that yep. block of ice on the bottom because it keeps it really keeps everything cold you put your meat on the bottom there because it'll keep your meat frozen yeah. until you get to camp and then you can keep it out, pull it out, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, everybody knows Yeti coolers. Um, those are very well insulated as well. They are pricey, but you get what you pay for. <clears throat> Excuse me. You do get what you pay for with the Yeti coolers. Mm -hmm. So we definitely yep. recommend, if you can afford it, um, we def definitely recommend mm -hmm. the Yeti coolers um, above everything else. Walmart does have an upgraded line of uh, similar coolers mm -hmm. as yeah. well. Um, and we just recently had one of those and it did work really well. Yes. Um, it really did, but it was a little more pricey. It wasn't $15, um, but it worked really well. But if you can, we recommend Canyon Cooler or Yeti or... Um, anything along those lines yeah. um, and there are many places where you can find a Yeti cooler you can I believe you can actually find them at an REI store yep. if you have one where you live if you don't live in Arizona or you can get them off the website as well of course guys if we missed anything make sure you give us a comment down below yep. helps us and it helps everybody else watching the channel as well and Make sure that you give us a great big thumbs up mm -hmm. if you like this video, if you got something out of it, and hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so that way you're notified every time we release a video every single week. And with that, always remember to cherish the journey and cherish the moment that you're in. And Until make time to spend time with those, you, those that are important to you like family and friends. Yes. Until next time, guys, we'll see ya. Peace.